Memorizing multiplication facts is hard. Anyone who's gone through second through fourth grade can vouch for that. We all know that. That's why you're watching this video because you're having a hard time memorizing your multiplication fact. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about a way where we don't have to memorize all of our multiplication facts. We can turn a lot of these problems into easier ones, into things that we already know. And that's why I wanna focus on the sixes, sevens, eights, because that's what most people have trouble with. The best way to understand the distributive property is to see some examples of it. So this first problem, I have eight times six, and here I have this set of blocks, and it is eight blocks long, and it is six blocks wide. We can look at this as eight rows of six, or we can look at it as six rows of eight, counting groups of things. That's what multiplication is, repeated addition. All right, and let's say we don't know eight times six. So instead of looking at eight times six, I'm going to break this set of blocks up so that way I don't have to count them individually and I'm not counting rows of six plus six is 12 plus six is 18 all the way up to eight. So I'm going to break this up. I wanna break it up here. The reason I wanna break it up here is because I know what eight times five is. And so if I break it there, this rectangle right here is still eight wide, but it's five long instead of six and then this is one long so eight times five i know that one already it's 40 and then eight times one is eight and so total this whole rectangle is worth 48 so eight times six which is the whole length of that is 48 so basically we broke that six up into five plus one and we multiplied each one of those pieces by eight. And that's what the distributive property is, is to multiply pieces. We are distributing over the addition and that's how we got the 40 plus eight. Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, here we have seven times four. This is seven. One thing I can do is I can break up the seven. Mm, I can turn it into five plus two. So this is five. And this is two because four times two is eight. So I broke up that seven into five plus two times four. Four times two gives us eight. Four times five gives us 20. And 20 plus eight is 28. Let's look at this one. We have eight times nine. So it's eight by nine. And I don't wanna count these. I don't wanna count by nines. Let's see, which one do I wanna break up? The eight or a nine? Well, it's up to you. I can break up the eight and turn that into uh, four plus four and multiply that times nine. Oh, but what if I don't know what nine times four is? Well, if you don't know four times four, then we won't use that. Remember, the idea of this method is to break these into problems that we know. So instead of breaking up the eight, maybe I wanna break up the nine because I know what eight times five is. So I'm breaking up that nine. If I use, if I turn this into five, then my other one is gonna be worth four. So I'm breaking it up right here. So I have five and four, and that's what I'm multiplying times eight. So eight times five is 40, I know that one. Eight times four. Okay, well, even if we don't know eight times four, we could even break that up again. But eight times four is 32. So we end up with 40 plus 32, which equals 72. Now this method can really test your addition skills, but there's no memorization involved. Okay, now that you got the hang of it, let's do a few more. Six times six. One of the things I like to deal with is I like to deal with fives. I can break this up into six times five and six times one. So this would be five long and six wide, which gives us an area or 30 squares. This one is one long and still six wide. So that gives us six. So six times six or the total of that would be 36. So basically, all right, and so six times five plus six times one. 
Now written out like this, it might actually look even more difficult than how it originally looked. But remember, 6 times 5 is 30. And 6 times 1 is 6. And so that gives us 36. Okay, so I'm going to use the same idea again by using the whole, the 5s. Okay, and I'm going to break this 7 here into 5 and 2. 8 times 2, so the area of this piece of the rectangle is 16. And then this one would be still 8 long, 5 wide, it would be 40. And 40 plus 16 is 56. I also could have broken this up. Let's see what's another way I can break this up. I can say that I know that 8 is just 4 plus 4. 4 long and 7 wide. 7 times 4 is going to be 28. And then 7 times another 4 is going to be 28. And we add those together and we still get 56. I think I like the first way better. Easier numbers to multiply and easier products to add. So now that we've done all of those, let's see if we can do some without the model. So 8 times 4. Hmm. Well, I can turn this 8 into 5 plus 3 because 5 plus 3 equals 8. And those are fairly easy to multiply times 4. So 4 times 5 is 20. And 4 times 3 is 12. And 20 plus 12 is 32. So the other thing I like about 5s is when we're multiplying a 5 times an even number, we end up with something with a 0 at the end, which makes it a lot easier to add. 6 times 7. Uh, this time I won't break it up into 5s. I'll break this 6 up into 3 plus 3. And 7 times 3 is 21 plus 21 will equal 42. 9 times 6. Well, let's break this 9 up into 5 plus 4 times 6, which is 6 times 5 is 30, and 6 times 4 is 24. And we get a total of 54. Okay, 12 times 8. Oh, this one's kind of challenging. So we could break that up into 6 plus 6, but oh, if I don't know what 8 times 6 is, that's not going to be very helpful. I could turn it into 5 plus something. Well, 5 plus what equals 12? Well, that would be 5 plus 7. And then I have to figure out 8 times 7 or I'd have to break that apart again. So it seems like neither one of those are great, the greatest way to split this up. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into 10 plus 2 because 10 plus 2 equals 12 and I like 10s. And 8 times 10 is 80 and 8 times 2 is 16 and 80 plus 16 is 96. Now a good thing to do would be to pause the video and challenge yourself to do these next seven problems. When you come back, I'll be giving you the answer. Okay, welcome back. I hope you took some time to pause the video and try these on your own. This 6, I could either break it down into 5 plus 1. That's not bad. Or I could break it down into 3 plus 3. But either way, I'm multiplying both of those. I'm multiplying that times 3. So this ends up being 9 plus 9, which is 18. I'm going to break this 7 up into 5 plus 2 times 9. 9 times 5 is 45. Plus 9 times 2 is 18. And then 45 plus 18. Kind of a harder one to do mentally. 63. So this one, this next one we're going to try and do mentally. 8 times 8. So if I break that 8 up, I'm going to break it up into 5 plus 3. 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 3 is 24. So 8 times 8 is 64. There we go. All right. 12 times 9. 12, I like breaking that up into 10 plus 2. 10 times 9 is 90. 2 times 9 is 18. 90 plus 18, 108. 7 times 7. Well, 7 times 5 
is 35 and 7 times 2 is 14. So we're doing 35 plus 14, which is 49. 6 times 15. Whoa, these are getting more challenging. I think we should break up that 15 into 10 plus 5. Separating the place values makes it a lot easier to add a lot of times. So 6 times 10 is 60. 6 times 5 is 30. 60 plus 30 is 90. 27 times 4. Once again, if we separate this by place value, uh oh, well, what if I don't know 7 times 4? I can turn this into 20 plus 5 plus 2. So instead of us looking at that whole 7, I turned that into 5 plus 2 because that's 7, and 20 plus 5 plus 2 is 27. But now I'm distributing three things 20, 20 times 4, well, 2 tens times 4 is 8 tens, or 80. Plus 5 times 4 is 20, plus 2 times 4 is 8. Did you get 108? So this has been a video on multiplying using the distributive property. And as you can see, it takes some addition skills. But if we do have those addition skills and we understand how to break apart these numbers and use the distributive property, we can turn even big problems into small problems. Thank you.